So we're, I think, 93 years old now, um, started in 1923. Mm -hmm. uh, and over that time, we've had a, a fairly consistent focus on, on just a couple of things. So the first is, is, is a mission to be our client's most important partner. So try and put the client's business first, their goals, their mission, their ambitions. And if you follow that path, you build your client's business and grow your client's business, it always in turn grow your own business. So that focus is really important to us and it's never changed. The second is our philosophy of resist the usual. And if you think about a lot of things in, in, in life, in how can you ever win if you follow people? So if you're second, you can never win. And so we believe resisting the usual is a, is a good credo. Uh, so that we always come up with original ideas, new strategies to help our clients succeed. So those two um, ideas, if you like, drive the heart of our business. And I think it's one of the core reasons why we've been successful uh, over the years. Well, I, I think all around the world, including Mongolia, technology is, is a complete revolution. And I, I think advertising marketing is actually at the forefront of all that. If you look at many of the revolutionary companies, Google and Facebook, mm -hmm. their business models are built on advertising. So they have advertising at the heart of what they do. So I think the advertising industry is really hand in hand with the technology sector. Um, not only just because we, we built the business models, but because of all the data it gives us and the insights it gives us into customers. So really, I think technology and advertising goes hand in hand. In, in the context of Mongolia, I think we're just at the tipping point of, of an explosion because you know, our report did show that certainly a high penetration of mobile phones, within that, a high penetration of smartphones, and within that, uh, a great deal of people, I think 60% of smartphone users have access to the internet. And so that means that uh, people all over the country have access to the best content, the best ideas, the best stories from brands all around the world. And that I think is an incredible opportunity for both marketers in Mongolia, but also the consumers, because they get to see some of the best work in the world. Yeah, well, social marketing is uh, all across Asia is a is a huge part of our business. Um, so across the world, in fact, is a huge part of our business. And I, I think what it is 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 almost a technology has enabled something that's always been true in the report that we had. So Mongolia, in Mongolia, consumers use word of mouth as a powerful form of communication to get knowledge and information. Social media just takes that to an exponential level. And something that's already in the culture about sharing stories, communicating with people, that is now powered by technology. And we'll see an explosion of how Mongolian consumers use that to get information and share information. I get no doubt that uh, uh, firstly consumers will, will drive uh, social media. Uh, it's, it's happening all around the world, it's happening here as well. So firstly, consumers will, 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 will drive it. And the good thing about um, uh, Mongolia, there's a lot of learnings from around the world about how do you use that, that social media effectively. And one, one also uh, uh, idea is, is don't try to attract people, but engage people with great content and they will find you. So that's really, really important. The second piece is understanding that all that social media throws off great data. And once you look into that data, you can understand people in a much better way. And by understanding the much better way, you can work out what they love, what they hate, what they're looking for. So instead of advertising being kind of, if you think, dumb, advertising can be really smart, tailored, and really personalized to individuals. So those two opportunities, great content and great personalization, are two good keys for how do you approach social media. In, in broadcast media, which is not so interactive, which is uh, maybe one-way communication, you don't perhaps need to have that sort of uh, focus or so that sort of power. But in social media, the combination of those two things is how you leverage the media the best. So um, I think it's a, a really interesting question. Uh, about a year ago, we published a report called uh, Bonfire of the Brands. And 
It was a global study in partnership with the consulting company PwC. And in that study, we identified all around the world that there is a crisis in branding and that uh, many of the great brands over the last 20 years are disappearing. Uh, and the average lifespan that a brand would stay in the top Fortune 500 was also shrinking. It used to be brands would stay maybe 25, 30 years in the Fortune 500. Now that's shrinking down to down about seven. So there is a global crisis on brands. And part of that is pace of innovation. So it's not just technology, it's pace of innovation. So <clears throat> the go-to-market time of products is shortened from maybe three to five years down to 18 months. So we are continually giving consumers new things. And consumers now with technology have the power to discover many more new things. So in this uh, flux, in this change, we are also driving uh, consumers to keep questioning new things by launching new things at them. And then consumers also have to the power to go find new things as well. So I think in that world, you've got to think a little bit differently about how you build your brands. Because what is true in that report is the value people put on brands hasn't changed. So, so values are really still strongly important. And so the shift, no matter what the medium is, whether you're advertising in a social sense or a, a traditional sense, the importance of building the brand is going back to your values. What do you stand for as a company? What role do you play in the world? How do you help people in their lives above and beyond the product that you make, above and beyond your latest new invention? And if you only tell your product story, if you only tell your latest innovation story, and you forget to tell people the value you bring as a brand to them, that's when you run your risk of being losing out to the next new innovation. And we see that time and time again. So innovation, product success, isn't the same as a great brand. But great brands are still things that people are looking for, and they're built on strong values, honesty, transparency, and a desire to be more important to you as a consumer than just the product we bring. And that's very important. So if you look at some of the great communication around the world now, and one of our, our, our most famous campaigns at the moment is a, a campaign we did for, for Burger King out of New Zealand, which went worldwide. It's one of the biggest campaigns in the world in the last year. And that was all about how can burgers help promote world peace? And so you have an idea here. We go, why would burgers want to help world peace? Um, but that's because we understood that consumers, our consumer group, are very passionate about the world we live in. They're passionate about uh, lacking... Uh, um, having a, a world free of conflicts. And so we took it on ourselves to say, well, look, we have a conflict of our own. McDonald's and Burger King, we tend to fight. So we, we tried to declare peace between McDonald's and Burger King and took that to the world. Now, that captured people's attention. That made people think, wow, here is a company that truly cares about the role they play and the values they have. And so that's the type of work I think we would hold up an example as, as that really works. You know, people who understand that that's the value you can bring people will be, be successful. And there's no reason we couldn't do uh, that type of work, that type of ideas in, in Mongolia. There's no reason at all. So I, I, I believe that, um, you know, advertising needs to be a force for good. Uh, and that um, whenever you have your brand, if you're truthful with your, with your consumers, or whether you're an advertising agency, if you attempt to be truthful with the work that you do, it will always pay back. If you look at many of the issues around the world, a lot of the challenges around the world, advertising and marketing and communication is a core weapon to solve some of those problems. So if you think about major issues such as diversity or, or global warming, one of the most powerful ways to change some of those things is education through communication. So advertising, I think, needs to be built on a bedrock of principles so that we go to market with brands which are honest, true, and represent the best of what companies can be and, you know, not, not what the worst of the companies can be. I think one of the great opportunities here in Mongolia is, is to see advertising as a competitive weapon. So generally speaking, if we went to another market such as, as, as London, the standard of creativity in advertising is extremely high. 
because marketers understand to have the most efficient marketing, you need to have communication which excites people, engages people, entertains people, and actually in a socially driven world, in a media fragmented world, that people want to come and find and want to share. And they understand that's a competitive weapon. I think when you look at Mongolian advertising, the standard isn't of that level yet. Brands that understand that actually if they look at that and they try to develop advertising which really captures people's attention, they'll find their marketing becomes much more efficient. So instead of, uh, there's an old saying in advertising, instead of outspending your com competitors, try to outsmart them. And I think the best way to see advertising is this strong competitive weapon you can use to make consumers absolutely find you irresistible. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm fairly lucky in that uh, I get to look after um, all of Asia. Uh, and so that's uh, nearly three billion consumers. Um, so I'd say that's, that's like almost a, you know, two or a third of the world. So it's really hard to sort of generalize over a population that big and that diverse. Um, and one of the things we like to look at is a thing we call global boutique, which is understanding that every sale is a local sale. So we like to go the other way around, rather than saying, to try and generalize about, about Asian consumers, we like to go down and say, what's unique about each individual group? And maybe that's a, even a, a city or province in, in, in one country, or maybe it's a town in another, but we like to get very granular to try to understand how people are, are different. Um, there are things that unite people across Asia. Family values is one, uh, spirituality is often another, although there's many different forms of spirituality, but those are sometimes the bedrocks of Asian culture, but within that, there's so much diversity and so much, I think, greatness to be found within the different cultures across Asia. So it's very exciting to me. I think Mongolia is something that I'm just learning about. Uh, and one of the reasons we did our report is so we can get to understand Mongolians better. Um, so we're just getting under the skin of that. But from what I can see, uh, it's an interesting blend of two things at the moment. One is this uh, hunger and desire to embrace change, which is flowing through the country in many levels. That's really exciting. But the second, you've got these uh, group of consumers who are really excited by value and quality. They do search for it. They do look for it at every price point. But at the same time, they're not also just swayed by internationalism. There's so much local pride. And this blend between a huge amount of pride in the country, huge amount of pride in the values of the country, but also the search for uh, quality and value is a huge opportunity, I think, for, for Mongolian brands. Because if Mongolian brands can position themselves in the right space to offer quality and sort of nationalism, that's actually a strong combination for Mongolian consumers. And that's quite powerful. We don't see that in, in every market. So uh, I'm, I'm quite, one, of, one of the things I'm quite passionate about that, that I discovered through the report is, is the power of actually the brand Mongolia itself. You know, one thing we, we find is, is, is Mongolia really stands for something. It's got a lot of, around the world, it's got a lot of inherent values when you talk to people in Mongolia. It's got uh, imagery of rugged, brave, strong, determined, pure, unspoilt, beautiful. And these are all things that come with the brand Mongolia itself. That can be really powerful for clients to attach their products to. So for example, I think in the beauty segment and the fashion segment, all those values of Mongolia that I just talked about are great for those segments as well. You think about purity and beautiful. Great, if I was a beauty brand, I'd want to attach myself to those values as well. So you can imagine brands in the fashion sector, when they go out to the world and start marketing to the world, coming from Mongolia, and if they're in the fashion area, it'll bring with it sen a sense of identity, which you can't find anywhere else. It'll be unique and interesting, and that I think is a powerful tool to take people forward with. Now, you don't get that everywhere. Not all countries have that power. Um, so provenance does play a strong role in many categories. Maybe if you think a little about beer, most people know the beer Corona, it comes from Mexico. And they manage to tap into all the great things that come with Mexican lifestyle and chilled and laid back living. 
and attach that to their beer. It's been a worldwide success. I can see in the fashion category and I can see in the beauty category, Mongolian brands looking for the same way, looking to what is the best of Mongolia, attaching it to the brand, and then having the ambition to, to, to not only just do well here, because we already know that quality and local pride is strong, but then taking that to the world. And I'd like to see more brands from Mongolia use that strategy to, to have some global ambition. And there's a, a brand that we've been talking about over the last few days, um, it's called Le Mans. Uh, it's a, a fashion and beauty brand here, and that's the type of brand, it's premium, that's the type of brand that really holds my attention here and say, wow, they've really cut onto a smart thing. A, a, uh, the, the brand name has good local meaning. The uh, price point is premium. It's full of kind of the great values that come with Mongolia, purity and beautifulness. Mm -hmm. Doing well here. I think we could see that go around the world in many places. Yeah, so, so I mean, focus. I mean, one of the reasons we're here is that opportunity. Um, and so, so when, you, when you look at Mongolia itself, uh, you, you walk around the street, you find some many of the world's great brands here, and you can find some great local brands, particularly in things like banking sectors and, and yourselves, for example. But you then say to the advertising industry, how are we doing? Are we doing a good job at taking those brands out? And when you see that the brands are better than the marketing, you know there's an opportunity for us. So one of the reasons we've come to the market is actually to help build that infrastructure and that industry where we can see actually the, the duality being great brands but also great marketing. But the first point to do is, is this focus. Focus on the consumer. You know, what are they really looking for? What do they need? What, what turns them on? And capturing that and putting that insight into your marketing I think is, the, is really the first step. It's one of, the, one of the reasons we did the report, so we can start teasing out all that information and help our clients really kind of leverage upon all that insight. Which, which local brand would I take to the world mine? The one I just mentioned I think is, is really interesting, um, which is uh, Le Mans. Uh, I think it's uh, fantastic. Yeah which is, I think is a fantastic brand. It's not my client, I just heard of them today, but, but I think that's the type of brand I think could, could go overseas. Uh, I've been looking at some of the uh, areas of like Kashmir and the fashion brands. Those sorts of brands I think could be very powerful around the world. And I think generally speaking, it'd be uh, really great for Mongolia as well to have a global narrative, for people talking about your brands in such a way. Because at the moment, the global narrative uh, that you hear in the, in the press is always about commodities. Uh, and the commodity sector. And when you, when you get to the market, when you look at the consumers here, you discover there's so much more richness and so much more excitement. And so those sorts of things, I think, would not only be great for Mongolia, but would actually change the conversation globally about, about how exciting this market is and why sh people should come here, not just to do business, but also to, to get a taste of some of these exciting things that are happening. I mean, so I'd go back to our uh, mantra, which is resist the usual. I, I think when we look at some of the advertising here, there's a lot of cliches. So it's maybe cooler to start, and then it becomes overused. It, lo it loses its powerfulness. It loses impact. So then people move on and find a new style. Then everybody copies that, and then that will lose its, its, its powerfulness. So we would say resist the usual. Um, stop following those trends because you're repeating what other people are doing and you can't win if you follow. So create your own identity, create your own way to go to market, to create a brand and, and a voice for your brand that is unique to you. So we'd probably say resist following the next, next trend. However, what I would say is, is what we are going to see because the, the youth of Mongolia is so powerful, so connected, they can see the best communication in the world through their, their, their phone. So they're going to be exposed to the, the funniest movies, the latest episodes, the, the latest communication from brands, everything. And so what that will do is accelerate very quickly the type of communication that people are expecting. They will want to have world-class communication. And so brands need to catch up because consumers will go from uh, seeing a certain level of advertising to the best in the world instantly as soon as they switch on their phone. 
And so brands need to know that, that is changing. So if you're still advertising at a certain level, your consumers have already moved on. And so our task, I think, is to realize that consumers change first, and if we don't actually catch up with them, we will be left behind a long way. So I think the, the race is on. And one thing I even thought was inspiring is, is even downstairs in your lobby, you have a statement up as about world-class content. And I think that's absolutely perfect. And I think you've got the absolute right idea. Because if your content is world-class, people will come find it. If your content is not world-class, then you've got access, everybody can have access to anything else. So I think the same is for brands, the same is for advertising. So I, I'd share your own philosophy and say, you've got it right. Now let's do that for all the brands in Mongolia. Because we're in the same business, the content business. You, you present news stories and articles and interesting facts. I pursue content for brands. Some of it's advertising, some of it's editorial, some of it's PR, some of it's social, but it's content for brands and it needs to be great.